Hello there and welcome to the fourth video in a tutorial series on how to make an endless runner game in Unity 6 for mobile devices. In this tutorial we'll cover adding a player model as well as animations. Remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial I upload and feel free to leave a comment and drop a like. So at this moment our player is quite literally just a cube right here. And what we're going to do in this tutorial is we're going to explore something created by Adobe which will allow us to import an actual player that's usable in this game. And the way we do that is we head to a place called Mixamo.com. And if you head over there, uh, you'd need to create a free Adobe account. If you've already got an Adobe account, you can just sign in with it. And what this website is, is a real cool, quick, easy way to download models and animations. So once you're logged in, head to characters and you can pick any one of these characters, like literally any of them at all. Uh, whatever suits you and your style of, of game. There are quite a lot of different characters that you can pick from. So what I would recommend is just have a quick look through and pick one that you think fits. For me, I think this character fits quite well for what I'm going to be aiming for. So there's our character model. The next thing we need to do is find the animations for her. So let's start by going to animations and there are a lot of animations that you can pick. So let's start by looking for running. So that's going to be our fundamental animation. So if we search for that and let's have a look through some of these uh, animations. So let's take that one for example and you can see a preview of it over here. What we do need to do is tick in place just here and the reason we're going to do that is because we want to be able to control the movement ourselves we don't need the movement to be in the animation we just need the animation to be itself which is this so once you've got a running animation and the character you now need to click on download up here but it's not just as simple as downloading things best way to do this is to select a format and change it to collada and make sure it's with skin and then click download. And what this will do is it will download textures and that's crucial if you want to modify this further. It's not strictly necessary to do this, but I always like to have those textures on hand just in case. And you can see it download in there. So once they've downloaded, you can see it's there, open up that zip file and you'll see a folder called textures. The next thing to do is create a folder which you can then import into Unity. So head to another folder that isn't in a zipped folder and create a new folder. I'll just call this my player. And inside that folder, what you need to do is drag and drop this textures into, oops, into there like that. Next thing, we need to actually bring in the models. So if we head back to Mixamo, click download again, and then change the format to FBX for Unity with skin, download. And what that will do is it will download this model in an FBX format, which is usable in Unity. So once it's done that, drag and drop this into that same folder. So we have my player right there. And I'm going to use one more animation. So the animation I'm going to use is going to be um, something where we can run and stop. So let's see what we can have. So let's have it as uh, stumble. I can't remember the actual one I uh, used. It might be stumble backwards. Let me double check because I've already pre-done all of this, so you don't need to uh, worry about that. So I've used Falling Back Death, so that's going to be the animation we use. Obviously you can use any animation you want, so Falling Back. So this animation right here. So essentially, when our character hits something, that animation is going to play. So now we click on Download, and FBX for Unity again, click Download. And once we've done that, same again, drag that into your folder. So there it is. 
drag that into my player folder. And now you've got a folder called my player that has the textures, the model and two animations. So all you would do is drag and drop my player into Unity. So then down here, I've already gone ahead and done it. I have my player right here. So if I go into this folder that I've just dragged and dropped, you can see I can go into the textures folder and I could modify these textures if I wanted to. And what that would do is it would change the look. We're not going to go into it too much, but it's just there if you need to do it or if you want to do it. Fundamentally, we have these two objects here. This is our running animation right here. So how do we make it so as this character is now this cube? Well, it's actually really, really easy. All we do is drag and drop this onto player like that. And you can see it has appeared right there. Next thing to do is set the position over here of this character as zero, zero, zero. And you can see they're right there. So let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. And now we just need to align the character with the floor. So to do that, let's actually take the player cube now and let's untick mesh renderer and we can physically see the character. The cube still exists. It will still function as it did previously. We just cannot see it because no mesh is rendering. Next thing to do is drag the player down so they touch the floor. So drag down to about there. Next, we need to work with some animations. And if you want to use the exact same player that I have here, I will put this in the pinned comment if you want to download it exactly how I have to make it easier for you. If you don't want to use Mixamo, you can just go ahead and download this. Uh, but we need to work with the animation. So how do we get the animations working? Because if we press play right now, all that's going to happen is it's going to basically just, just be the model because we need to add the other animation to it for a little later on in development. Um, and we do need to play around with those assets, otherwise we end up with some wacky results. As you can see, that's not meant to happen. Although we can still move left and right, that's not the result we want. So how do we get these animations to work on our character? Really, really easy. So if we go to animator, you can see that it is empty for our character. If we go further down, you can see that there are different options that we can use for our character. Uh, we could change things, but there's nothing there animation wise, even though we imported that animation. So what we need to do is these models, click the arrows next to them and then find the triangular icon. This represents the animation. What you want to do is click it, hold control, and press D. What that will do is it will create a duplicate and it will extract it out of the model. So we have the running animation. Let's do the same now for falling backwards. Hold control, press D. And then we can press the arrows again to collapse them. And we have two animations. Now with a running animation, what we want to do is we want to tick loop time. What that means is this animation will continually loop. It won't just play the once. Uh, with the falling back animation, we only want it to play once because effectively we're only going to hit something once and fall over. Whereas running, it's going to be looped constantly. So make sure that is loop time. Next thing we need to do is drag and drop it onto this character model here. So drag and drop. And now if we go to animator, we can see that we have running right there. And this is where we can kind of, if you move this over here, it now gives us the option to add falling back. And you'll see that it gets added as a different color on this animator panel when we drag and drop it onto our model right here. So drag and drop. And you'll notice that this one is gray. What that means is that this is not the default animation, the orange one, is the default animation. That means whenever our game starts, we'll be able to play this animation. We can change a couple of things here. Uh, we could change the speed if we want to, um, like you could slow her down, speed her up. You could even make her stop if you wanted, um, but you can do it with any animation. 
Uh, if we go into a negative, it would effectively play backwards. But we'll go into a little bit more with this uh, later on in the series when we actually play different animations depending on what's happened in the game. Uh, if we go to the animation tab down here and click there, you can see how complicated that this particular animation is. There's a lot going on. And it's worth pointing out that any animation you create, you can literally create almost any animation in Unity, but it isn't recommended. This animation tab is more for simple use. Uh, but again, we'll do that a little later on in the series. For now, all that's important is the fact that we have added animations to our player. Uh, we have them here and it's created this little asset right here. That is a controller. And that controller is what holds the animations inside Animator. So if we press play now, in fact, let me zoom out so we can get a good indication of how she is running. And does it look fine? So she should play the animation of running as she's going along this section here. There we go. So it looks okay. I just think we need to speed up how she's running so it flows a bit better. And to do that, if you remember, if we head to our player, scroll down, we can set the move speed right here. So let's set it to four and press play. And let's see how this looks now. I think it might just need a bit more tweaking but it shouldn't matter too much as long as the animation looks reasonable, which it does. I think that works fine. Obviously, she's just going to run off into the distance, but that's not a problem at all, because at the end of the day, all that we're trying to do here is to effectively add the model and the animations. But what we'll finally do is we will add the camera to actually move along with our player. And to do that, let's take our main camera right here, double click, and let's set it so as it's on the same kind of path as our player. And to do that, we just need to move it across one. Uh, let's bring it up, maybe one more. And let's pan the camera down a touch. So let's go on the rotation and pan it down to maybe there. Let's in fact I think I think that'll do just for now obviously you can modify this as and when you need to but if we were to press play the camera doesn't follow so how do we make it so as this camera follows our player well it's actually really easy and we're going to create a separate script for this but we're going to reuse code so let's go to our scripts folder let's right click create mono behavior script and we'll have this as cam follow and all we really need to do is, oh, there we go. <laughs> I wonder what happened then. It's open in Visual Studio. All we really need to do, um, not sure why that's happened. Uh, we'll just reload it, it's not a problem. Yeah, again, third time lucky. All we need to do is make sure that our camera flows at the same speed as our actual player. So let's make sure that we do open this up. Give it a moment. There we go, running back end. So the original script that we wrote, we can effectively use that same line of code. So if we go into cam follow, and then if we put in here, the same information as we put here. So let's have move speed. So we can copy this variable, place it into cam follow, and then we can take this line of code as well, which is the line that moves the object forward. And let's place it in update. Let's delete the annotations and void start. And let's set the move speed to four and let's save that script and then head back into Unity. And what I'll do is I will put this script in the pinned comment as well if you want to use it. Uh, again, if the model you want to download it, that's in the pinned comment as well. And the final thing to do is drag and drop cam follow onto the main camera. There. And you'll see that that then becomes a component. So if we press play, we'll see our character running and we'll be able to control left and right 
with the camera following right behind them. Are we ready? There we go. Cool. Obviously there's nowhere to run on here, but the camera is still following. You can see they're running off in the distance and the camera is following. Awesome. So next tutorial, what we're going to do is we are going to add some environment to this now to actually make it look like a game. We've got the basics down. We just need to make it look a little bit more like a game with some environment. So remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come. And I'll see you next time.